basketball, wrestling, hockey, and more, we have a slate full of good stuff for you in high school mm -hmm. sports. Let's get started. Welcome to Sports <laughs> Path. I'm Tim Peterson. And I'm Zach Halverson. We're going to talk some high school basketball and some hockey that has occurred over the last couple weeks. And I'm Jamie Dustin, and I've got a story about boxing at the Vadness Heights Commons and a story about a high school swimmer breaking records. Nice. It was a classic suburban conference battle between a couple of great teams. Richfield and Matamidi both have great overall records, but Richfield was the conference leader. Matamidi tried to change all of that, and they played at home. It was January 15th. We see the Richfield Spartan traveling up to Matamidi to take on the Zephyrs. The perimeter, Mooster with it, makes a head fake, takes a jumper, and it's good. <laughs> Mooster and Guyton gets blocked hard by Lindquist. It hits absolutely nothing, and they can run with it, and they do. All the way down the floor, laying it up and in. Yohan Ross for his first basket of the evening. Wide open and blocked by James. Up ahead once again, catching and shooting and scoring is Joan Ross and Richfield's rolling. Sideline, he was falling back, tries to throw it in and gives it right to Williams. Williams bringing it in, but Jelly gets the block on that. Mita. And a pair steal. Williams comes in again. Lays it up and in. Oh, Williams playing very well so far here early on. <laughs> Booster from the outside. Good. And they do give him the three on that one. He strips it again. Nooney. He's going to slow it down. Hands it off to Linquist. He's not slowing it down. Takes it up. Flips it in. Off the glass. Inbound. Booster. Three pointer on the way. Good. Booster. Linquist. Up pushing it up the court. Nice move, a little flip, and in. Into the front court, looks to bring it down the lane, the pump fakes, gets his man in the air. And as Williams brings it up court and leading the way for the Spartans, leans in and gets oh. it to go. Up top, Newman goes inside, Lindquist, he'll take that shot somehow, and he does, and he makes it. 33-32 your score, we'll be back with second half action here at Matamita High School. And can't get it, he'll get his own rebound, power it up again, oh. that's a foul, and makes the basket. The two linebackers going at it. For him, from the outside, long jumper on the Ooh. way, and it's good by Jawan Ross. The it's really not him. 23.8 a game. Wow. Newman, forcing it, and gets the roll. A lot of three points. Goldberg oh. inbounds it, goes to the basket, and he's wide open. That's got to be a set play. He had jelly too. It would have been a two on one. Into oh, nice! Oh, pretty pass. And Ross penetrated, trading quickly. Gets everybody moving and makes the basket. Ross having a heck of a second away with it. Pushes it up. Ross spins, lays it up, left handed. No travel call. Basket good. 84. The final tally. 71. That means, that means they had 51 second half points after getting 33 in the first half. So a big second half for the Richfield Spartans who give Matamidi their first home loss of this season. Matamidi played well but couldn't do enough. They lose this one at home. I'm Tim Peterson with Johnny Kane. They lose it 84-71 against the Richfield Spartans. Oh, Matamidi's first loss at home all season. That Richfield team was good. Not a lot of height, but uh, they're leading the, the conference, and we'll take a look at that right now and show you where these teams sit. Richfield right on top there, 6-1 and one overall. Ele or in the conference, 11-4 and four overall. Very good Tartan right there, as expected. Hill Murray chasing, Matamidi chasing as well. Like, look at Matamidi's overall record, 11-3. and three. They're right there with Richfield, but they do have that loss against them and two conference losses so far this season. Uh, going over to the uh, suburban east side, White Bear Lake. At fourth place, uh, pretty solid, uh, kind of middle of the pack there, and, and you know, not too far to play with some great teams. Roseville basketball, one of the top teams in the state this year, surprising a lot of people. It'll be interesting to see how that uh, conference uh, season wraps up. You could say White Bear is above the below, but below the upper. There you go. There they sit. Well, uh, Tia Elbert is a very good basketball player, and her stats tend to not only prove that she is going to go to a decent college, but also that Tia Elbert is a very good basketball player, maybe the understatement of the year on this show. She does well in school, top of her class at Tartan, completing a package that colleges drool over. And looking at her stats now this season, amazing. 
Amazing, Tim. Looking at uh, the total point leader, 630 points. Uh, points per game, average points per game, 37.1, just dominating the competition. And again, this is overall. Uh, six assists per game. Uh, closest to her is 4.1. And that's a big difference in high school. It is. It is. And yeah. you just see the, the, the rest of them, and they're all kind of within a point or two. This one, 5.1 steals per game. She gives it out and takes it away, 5.1. Yeah. I mean, that steals is above and beyond everybody else, too, but yet has not yet committed anywhere. Right. Not yet. A lot of colleges crying, hoping for that phone call or email. I don't know how they do it these days. Facts. Yeah. Well, we saw Pam Borton uh, out at her <laughs> games last year, mm -hmm. and I'm sure she's been out this year. We just haven't seen her yet, but uh, probably getting a lot of looks. That's for sure. That's for Speaking sure. Speaking of looks, let's look at the classic suburban conference and show you where that Tartan team is sitting. Same kind of White Bear Lake there, above the below, but below right. the upper of uh, Richfield, in boys and girls doing quite well this year. Yeah, and, and looking at Hill Murray as well, having a having a pretty decent season so far, five and two overall, nine and seven, and that's uh, kind of the, uh, the, the the gist of it. You know, we'll see how the, the overall and the, the conference standings and records and all that kind of wrap up here as we are over past the halfway point and getting very close. And uh, we'll, of course, give you all the coverage as we get closer to sections. And we'll move it over to the Suburban East and show you how White Bear Lake has done this so far this year. Right in the middle of the pack, but look at their overall record. Played very, very well in conferences, but their non-conference was very tough. Yeah, you know, and obviously uh, they've got some uh, great talent, great players, and a lot of talent on the team. Jordan Foley, um, among the uh, you know the future of the team, is looking very good. So uh, we'll see how they how they wrap up these seniors trying to have some success in their final year. Both boys and girls conferences look the same for the most part on who's who's on top, who's in the middle. Mm -hmm. Kind of weird in that way. Yeah. yeah. Equal. Well, Bill Lechner and the Hill Murray Pioneers hosted Lakeville North back on January 17th. It didn't take long to decide this one as the Pioneers got off to a great start. Welcome to Aldrich Arena and tonight's non-conference match between the Lakeville North Panthers and the Hill Murray Pioneers. And it's a school night. There's a goal. And I think oh, that and it's was an own goal. By a, a Lakeville player. Yeah, La Chapelle put it out front. Mast Ostick. He grabs a 1 0 lead. I think Sadik, Sadik right there, and Ostick. Looking away and carried back in by Mills. Long shot right on. Wilson the save. Kind of left a juicy rebound, but Mills a step slow. Now they try to wrap it around right out front. Still no indication. Hill Murray thinks they got a goal, and they do. It's 2 0. Pioneers. Whack away three times on your doorstep, and you don't like it when your own guy scores. And look at this. Lamelle. Another beautiful one. Rebound. Oh, Wilson. They score! Oh, I thought Wilson had it, but the rebound trickles through. It was tied up, held in at the far point, sent on oh. the front by Zarembinski. They score! It's 4 0. Hill Murray. Mills in front. Now it comes free. They score! Tapping it home. It's a hat trick for CJ La Chapelle, and it's 5 0. Hill Murray. Beauty. This obviously this period's going a lot faster. Right oh, across oh, oh. the one timer, it's a beauty, and Tyler Funk buries it. Power play goal makes it seven nothing. Pioneers, no chance there. Second wow. power play goal of the game. As we, so as we get to the end of a Hill Murray Pioneer victory, seven to nothing this evening over Lakeville North. The time has come, my friend. Who is tonight's star of the game? Easily the man they're uh, surrounding and hugging, John Dugas, the senior goalie. He just was solid. He gave Lakeville no hope. Well, that's that was thick. a blowout. Yeah, it was uh, not <laughs> close. And you can see why. They got John Dugas here, number two right now in the class of bourbon for save percentage, about 94%, roughly, if you want to round up, run down, I should say. And then uh, looking at uh, the, the uh, state percentage leaders, you got Colton Anderson, 90% uh, number two there from uh, Stillwater. So plenty of uh, great talent, and that's obviously super amazing. Uh, looking at more leaders, uh, see what we have. Shot in the goal. <laughs> Jake Jackson, total points, 34. 34, I believe he's going to Michigan Tech. Zach Lavelle, undecided as, he's only had a couple callings, which is hard to believe. He's a three-sport athlete. I will talk about him later. For sure. Radio Sullivan right there. Jake Wall and White Bear Lake on top there for uh, since he's in total points. And he, he's still young. 
Yeah, Jake Wallen is sophomore, and you know, being realistic here, we'll see how long he stays here as a lifer like Bear. I know there's plenty of people wanting to bring him out and up to the uh, juniors and NHL and all that, so we'll see how uh, where he goes. But uh, and by the way, it is Jake Wallen. A lot of people like around the state have like these various pronunciations. Wallen, it's Wallen. Wallen. Yeah. Carton on top of the Classic Suburban Conference. Well, in, in our graphic, St. Thomas Academy undefeated in that conference, but they're A, where Carton, Hill, Murray, double A. Right. Um, so we got a good game coming up on Thursday. St. Thomas and Hill, Murray will play over at Aldrich, and that's going to be another good battle. Those two teams have met twice already this year and split, so it'll be fun to see who comes out of this one between the top two teams in double A and A. Right, and uh, you're not going to want to miss that, that game, uh, TV19, be out there for be uh, really cool to see and looking forward to seeing the result of that game. Tartan, two Tartan right on top. They've only got two losses all season. They're both in conference. Suburban East here with White Bear Lake in the middle of the pack there. They Played are. Played well as of late though. Very much improving and this is a team that you're going to have to watch out for because they've, uh, they've lost to Hastings, they've lost to Roseville, but now they're going to be able to see these teams again. Hastings on Thursday and it's going to be a team to watch as we get towards the end of the season because they are getting better, the young guys are improving. Everything's kind of coming together there in White Bear Lake. Looking at girls hockey now, as uh, the classic suburban classic conference. conference. Perhaps. We got uh, Hill Murray right up there toward the top at 7-1, 13-4 overall. The best overall record, but not the best conference record as that goes to South St. Paul, which usually puts together a pretty good girls team. North right there playing well in the girls team. Tartan kind of bunched up a little bit there in the middle. And looking yeah. at White Bear Lake in the Suburban East, it's uh, they're coming off of a uh, loss to Hastings in overtime last night. But uh, you know, getting you know they're they're getting a lot of ties. They're they're staying close with a lot of teams. They got five ties there. That's a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> a lot of ties. So they're, they're well, even. they're lead, they're leading the Suburban East in ties. There you go. There we go. Take yes. the positive. <laughs> well, well, uh, very interesting to see how these teams are doing, and uh, it's going to be exciting as the girls, boys, basketball, and hockey, they're uh, pretty good. Section, sections are coming up. That's for sure. Every year since I was in diapers, I have ma my, made my way down to this building sometime in late February. The Lee and Rose Warner Coliseum has been the host site of Hill Murray, Tartan, North St. Paul, and White Bear Lake section semifinals and finals for years and it is truly a gem in Minnesota boys high school hockey. Nick Anderson filed this story on, one of, on this one-of-a-kind piece of history. Originally it was the Hippodrome um, and the building was built in about 1949 and it's a dirigible hangar design. Hippodrome is the Greek word for horses and home so it's kind of the horse home so we, the name was changed to the Colosseum to kind of fit the multiple needs and usages of the building. The ice was put into this facility in the 1975-76 season and it opened in early 1976. Um, and at that time the name was changed to the Coliseum um, to kind of meet the needs of a multiple use facility. Herb Brooks Sr. was an employee here and um, I think you know a lot of the older guys here still feel you go all the way back to, to Herbie Sr. I'm working here and all the hockey that's played in this building and the historical value of, of hockey here in, in February and early March in the Coliseum is, is pretty unique to Minneapolis-St. Paul, I think. When you actually get up in the stands and you can see and you know there's not a bad seat in the house and you don't have people standing in front of you blocking your view and up on the glass and you can see every, every part of the rink from any seat in the house. And I guess kind of the favorite part is when you walk in here during during the section finals and you know there's 5,000 people in there and everybody's screaming or in the middle of the second overtime of one of the section final games. It's a it's a pretty unique place and and you know it gets pretty exciting to be in here. Working here, I like playing here. Actually, I, I'm a hockey ref as well, so I've I've refed here as well. And it's just such a unique atmosphere out there that you really don't get at too many other buildings. Um, early in the Coliseum's career, I think probably one of the most more memorable moments um, would have been Corey Millen um, when they played here from Cloquet and, and he broke his leg in the corner of, in the arena. I think a lot of the, the Johnson Hill Murray games from 15, 20 years ago um, when we had standing room only plus maybe a thousand people 
Um, those games were um, crazy and, and wonderful. And um, I mean, there's just been a lot of great hockey here right from the beginning. The ice I, is a, um, a direct system here. So the, we have actually coils that go into the cement that cool down the cement to make the ice. This is uh, the Zamboni that we use here at the Coliseum. It's got all kinds of levers and gadgets. And uh, this one right here is actually the one that will turn the rink water on. So the clean sheet of ice that you see out there, that's the one there this water will turn, or that lever will turn that water on. This one actually is uh, called the wash water turn on. So it actually kind of cleans out some of the cracks in the ice and gets some of the lint from skates and or from your socks and kind of some of that stuff and kind of cleans the ice before it gets sealed back in. I mean, we feel real blessed that we can provide a facility like this for um, Minnesota hockey and, and high school hockey to use for sectional time. It's kind of a unique facility. It um, seats about 6,000 people, which is it's very unique. It's not one of the big venues, but it's not one of the small venues, and it fits the needs um, of those high school hockey tournaments, and we're very happy to be able to provide our facility for that use. Alpine skiing and boxing and more coming up next on Sports Path. Watch it deep. A lot of down there. Can he catch up to it? He can. He's into the end zone. Push down. Albert throws up the three. Good. Pioneers with a good opportunity. Another goal! Big hook. And a jab right to the jaw. And lights were out. Tying the game up at four with this power play goal. New school records from two freshmen. In the alley. <laughs> I want to remind you, anytime you want the latest and the best of Northeast Suburban Area in sports, tune in to TV19. You will get the best coverage. Don't forget that. Noah Lucas, a Moundsview senior swimmer, set a state record at the Maroon and Gold Invitational. Lucas swam the 500-yard freestyle and finished in the record time of 4 minutes and 35.68 seconds. His team finished ninth in the tournament. He's fast. Well, Zach Lavelle has played on Hill Murray's varsity hockey team since the 8th grade. He is five points away from breaking the school's career points record. After getting two goals and two assists against South St. Paul on Saturday, he has not yet chosen a college, yet. But he is fighting, fighting breast cancer. No, he doesn't have it, nor does anyone in his family. But Zach knows of enough people who have, so he organized an annual fundraiser to help fight breast cancer. The third annual event will take place before and during the Tartan game on the 26th. With St. Thomas on Thursday the 24th, Zach could just break the school's scoring record on Saturday. Great story there, Tim. And now the Minnesota State High School Alpine Skiing Tournament will take place on February 6th at the Wild Mountain in Taylor's Falls. Let's take a look at the action which took place during last season's tournament. We're at Wild Mountain, Taylor's Falls, and we're here for the Section 4 Ski Racing Championships. Uh, this event qualifies two teams out of the 23 teams that are here to go to the state tournament. Uh, it also qualifies the top 10 individuals to compete at state uh, next week at Giants Ridge. We've got a group of professional course setters and did a great job today. Uh, last week was really soft. We were worried about snow conditions and it, it set up really good. The course is good. The snow's real hard, so, you know, it's uh, good conditions and you know, just make sure that we're skiing you know, solid and you know, not out of control. It's the nerves, you know, kids are, are going for it. They're trying to make the, the qualifier for state. Uh, you know, conditions are hard. A couple weeks ago we had soft conditions, so you're getting sharp edges on your skis, making sure they bite. Uh, yeah, and again, they've got to inspect the course beforehand and they get basically two shots. We've been, uh, you know, running different sets in practice, kind of giving them a variety of courses to think about. Uh, sort of training all year for this event. It's it's their day to show, their day to race. Um, they inspect, we inspect it. Uh, they had a waxing party the night before the race. Got their skis all prepped, ready to go. Last night we trained on this hill, so that prepared me pretty well for this. You know, 
the snow conditions here and the, the course. And then um, this morning, I, or last night, I waxed my skis. So I sharpened them and made them, you know, ready for the snow conditions. Our whole team is pretty deep this year. Um, was, I'm, I was skiing first and then second seed, Andrew Hodlick. He just won. He had a pretty good run. And then third seed, Joe Drailing. He's yet to come pretty soon. And then uh, Dane Larson's fourth. And Tyler Frost and Sam Wagner are the round out the, the six work putting on the table today. So. It's a great sport. I think, uh, you know, watching racers gets a little intimidating for kids, but we've had athletes come out that have never skied before. Uh, I've learned to ski, loved to ski, and then became great racers, you know, in the secondary side of it. I guess my goal is to make kids uh, skiers for life. It's a lifetime sport, and we're yep. here to teach them how to ski better, and they can go travel the world and ski wherever they want to. Yep. Really a uh, cool event. Uh, hopefully we'll see some great talent showed and, and you know, get out there if you can. It's uh, just a couple weeks away. Right, right, cool event. Jamie, Dustin, what do you have for us? Well guys, the Vadness Heights Commons is getting ready to host the annual Knockout Boxing Series on Friday, February 8th. The event will feature a night of great food, fun, and of course, the main attraction, amateur boxing matches. The money raised at this year's event will go to help knock out heart fatalities by promoting defibrillator awareness and a program run by Alina. It's a family event that promises to be a good time for a great cause. Well, the Triple A Award, otherwise known as the Excel Award, is now taking nominations. If you know of a high school junior who is active in fine arts, athletics, who shows leadership qualities, and is a model citizen, you can nominate them. Just go to the Minnesota State High School League website at mshsl.org and nominate them today. Also on mshsl.org, you can check out Lessons for Life. Lessons for Life will assist you in creating awareness in these students on your team that there is more to be gained from participation than just winning and losing. Well, now we'll welcome Jamie back into the conversation. And Jamie, the Super Bowl is set. Time to make some predictions. San Francisco or Baltimore? Well, Tim, I'm a little bit on the fence about this one. Uh, I would obviously love the Vikings to be there. So far, I don't think we've ever seen that happen in my <laughs> lifetime anyways. Um, so I'm leaning a little bit more towards San Francisco, but have not made my final decision as of yet. We want you to make one right here on air. Let's go. Okay. Let's cash Let's home go. here, Matt Burke or? I'm going to go with San Francisco. San Francisco. Mm. Zach, who, who, who are you taking? You know, it, it's tough because it's like, who do I think is going to win and who do I want you know, to win? Uh, I would say just because of, of Matt Burke, I'd like to see him kind of get a Super Bowl ring. I want to see Baltimore win. Um, but I, I do think that uh, San Francisco is going to win. So I think San Francisco, I want Baltimore. I can't lose. No, you can't. <laughs> Not really being decisive. I'm going with uh, I don't want it, but Baltimore, just mm. because I think Ray Lewis is going to carry him. He's done well through the playoffs so far, and I, I think it's going to carry over. But I think it's going to be a competitive Super Bowl, nevertheless. That's for sure, and it's going to be uh, interesting to see who can uh, kind of break out, and hopefully both teams come to play. I don't want a you know, 41 nothing Super Bowl. No. That's oh, never no. fun. No. Hey, Jamie, you've uh, partake taken in St. Paul Winter Carnival, just like myself, and yeah. that's coming up here yeah. this, starting this weekend. Um, are you... Going to be heading out down to St. Paul for some of those fun, fun times. Um, you know, I don't think I'm going to make it out there this year, but there are so many great events with the ice sculptures and there's parades and all kinds of stuff going on. So um, I wish I could this year, but I don't think I'm going to make it. Well, if anybody else, Zach, if you come down, I'll be there. I'll, I'll try. I'll for sure, you know, it's kind of busy time of the year right now, but I'll try to get out there. I know I'm going to definitely... Do my best to get out to uh, the crashed ice, uh, Red Bull crashed ice oh, down yeah. at uh, St. Paul at the uh, Cathedral. Uh, that's this Friday and Saturday. Uh, the I don't know what the dates are. I never know. But uh, it's this Friday and Saturday yes. this week. And, uh, 25th and 26th. 25th and 26th. There we go. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be uh, really cool. I, I was down in St. Paul yesterday and just seeing the, the track set up and uh, seeing the lights and all that and how big of a setup it is and how cool it looks with the cathedral. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very exciting and you know, one of those kind of unique opportunities because there's plenty of uh, cities in this uh, country that aren't able to have this 
and uh, kind of an international event. Great to see. There's some local guys, uh, at least last year, that uh, competed. Uh, Brian Bonin of White Bear Lake, one of them. Uh, I, I haven't been able to kind of see who is this year. Hopefully we can see more reports and kind of get you some info, maybe a next uh, sports path. Yeah, I got a, a friend who hooked us up last year. We got actually right against the boards. We were hanging mm. our hands over the boards, nice. hitting on them, yelling at the competitors, <laughs> cheering them on. We got the same thing this year. He's setting us up again. Nice. So, yeah, nice. it's a good time for that. And then... Uh, should also let, you know, we talked about St. Paul Winter Carnival. That starts this nice. Friday. They have coronation going on where we'll find out who the new Boreas is, the new queen, mm -hmm. Queen Aurora of nice. Snows, the princesses, all the wind princesses and brothers will all be announced to the public on that night. So it should be a lot of fun to kick off the St. Paul Winter Carnival. And while this cold air is out there, it's a good way to get out there and just have some fun rather than sitting around home doing nothing. Do you do any medallion hunting? I have done it in the past. I don't know if I'll have time this year. I didn't last year at all being so involved, but uh, a lot of fun. Uh, well, you know, it's your, what, your, your final kind of, what, how many days? Final, a... final as of this Wednesday is my last 12 days. Wow. My last hurrah. I've been uh, about wow. over 300 events this year. Mm. Charity events and churches and <laughs> old folks' homes and schools and parades all over the state. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a blast, and I thank TV19 as they were one of my sponsors to help me do all this. Well, that's very cool, and uh, every, the community appreciates your work out there and the rest of the, uh, the uh, Winter Carnival and, and the Royal Guard. I'm a, I'm a Royal Guard now. As of the otherwise, first year, you're just a King's Guard. Mm. And if you do a good job, then you become part of the organization nice. and you're a Royal Guard. Nice. So I'm a Royal Guard now. Congratulations. Hail the Dan. Guard. Well, to keep up on your local high school sports or to comment on what we've been doing, check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash TV19sports, also on Twitter at TV19sports. And be sure to tune in to our next live show on February 6th as we will talk section playoffs. Until then, I'm Jamie Dustin. I'm Zach Alverson. And I'm Tim Peterson. And, and that's, that's your, your Sports, sports Path. path.